know, is a thing like that possible? So, and what would it mean to do a good job of that? Okay, here's another version of these Weta guys from New Zealand. Gentleman who made the ray gun. This is one of his colleagues, or group of his colleagues. Now when New Zealand won nine Oscars for Lord of the Rings, needless to say, the Wellington City Council was extremely pleased because they realized they had like a really cool creative class winning thing on their hands and they were, had placed themselves on the map cinematically. So they commissioned this piece of public art. Now this is not like a steampunk ray gun kind of sitting inside the case that I was describing earlier. This sucker's three stories high. And it's sitting in the middle of Wellington and it's got like a plaque and the whole nine yards and as far as I can figure it's good for the next 200 years. You know, it's really their public celebration of a very meaningful historical moment in the history of Wellington when they sort of broke free of their parochial limits and had a worldwide cultural success. So, you know, it's a movie camera. But from what time period? There's never been a movie camera like that. That's a completely imaginary kind of H.G. Wellsian steam-powered analog tripod sci-fi monster of a movie camera. You know, and I cannot tell you, I cannot convey to you the physical affect of actually being next to this sucker. It's taller than the top of this building. You know, they're like children wandering under the, you know, it's big. Its legs are as big as these, as these overhead rafters almost. You know, it's not like a minor thing. It's like, a it's almost an arch of triumph. And, you know, the effect that it has on the passerby, you know, I would like to be able to describe that. I kind of lack the words. But, you know, it's not, it's not an odd steampunk curio. This is like an act of urban commemoration and really a kind of Kulterkampf triumph. Okay, now I want to move into another space. You know, I took this picture in the area of Turin, which is well known for its Art Nouveau buildings. Uh, this is one of the most famous Art Nouveau buildings in Turin, Stile Floriale in the Italian idiom. This building is undergoing repair. So here you have this elaborate, handmade, floral ironwork with contemporary icons on it. You know, and I find this pretty weird, mostly because these icons are designed for semi-clandestine Italian construction workers and they're kind of directly hooked onto this thing. So we're seeing some kind of strange anachronism here. But it's not quite so directly atemporal as this. Here you've got a contemporary bulldozer repairing the same Art Nouveau house. So, you know, you look at a bulldozer in an Art Nouveau house and they really seem kind of violently opposed in the public mind because Art Nouveau is handmade, and delicate, and floral, and anti-industrial, and a bulldozer is just about as heavy duty, and you know, muscular, and immediate as a current technical object can get. And yet, the bulldozer is restoring the crumbling Art Nouveau house. It's not there to like oppose the Art Nouveau house, it's actually there to make sure that the Art Nouveau house continues to exist. So, you know, is that a, his, a temporal? You know, I think it is a temporal. It's not just a case of like clashing anachronism. There's a relationship between these two objects which is more intimate than that. Now I want to ask you, what would the effect be if you brought in some guys from Weta and they painted this bulldozer so that it looked like a Stile Floreale bulldozer? Right? In other words, you take off the ugly yellow paint and you just tart the thing up. 
you know, in Art Nouveau style. So you've got an Art Nouveau bulldozer which can like save Art Nouveau buildings. Right? I mean, how hard would that be to do? Right? It wouldn't cost very much. You could like hire some graphic students to come out with like the spray paint, kind of do the thing up. You know, it's sitting there, it's been working, and you know, they're really working on these buildings. Why don't they repair the repair devices so that they don't clash with the background? I mean, if your business is like historical recreation, rec restoration, why doesn't the hardware thematically match the object? I mean, why are the Italians missing that particular trick? You know, is that going to happen? You know, I have to wonder. I mean, if I went to the Turinese City Council and I pointed this out, would they do that? Okay, now this one's a little subtler. This is kind of Nicola Nova. I don't want to try your patience here. I know I'm rambling on, but... Okay, this is, uh, to me, a very atemporal image. It's got an Art Nouveau stele, a trash can, and a piece of graffiti. Okay, this one image is about 102 years old, and it's very artsy. And you've got this other thing, which is a garbage, and is about throwing stuff away. And then you have the very temporary piece of graffiti tagging, which is basically carrying out the same function as the stone thing, except from a different social class. So, you know, I look at this, and I consider it very atemporal, and it's also absolutely boring. It's actually hard to look at. You know, people pass this by every day, they would never see the implicit contrast between these three emblems or items. You know, and if I put this photo on the front of a magazine, nobody would sort of say, wow, how sci-fi, how far out, how contradictory, how... It doesn't do any of the things. There's no pizzazz. That's not a transgressive image, but it's really a temporal. I think it's sort of super atemporal. Here's another one. You can see this is really bothering me. This is a uh, uh, this is a shipping container on a ship in the Danube in Belgrade. Shipping container has been reformatted as a house. You see, they've bored holes in it. They've got a stove inside. They cut that window in there. They put the window in it. It's been hooked up for electricity. This is a gas feeder on the side. It's got water tanks. It's a shipping container which has been repurposed as a house. Okay, street use. Once it was a shipping container, now it's a house on a ship. Okay, so, you know, is that atemporal? Well, you know, let me ask. Suppose that you had a mobile home and it was sold to you and they said, oh, and it will also double as a shipping container if you don't want to live in it. Right? I mean, it's just specifically designed to have dual functions. You know, it's an Airstream trailer, but it's like a thermos. So, you know, you can just sort of lock it shut and put all your stuff in there. And, and, you know, that'll be okay. Does that have the frisson of this? No, it doesn't. Why not? I'm a little vague on that. Why doesn't it have that? Okay, so you may ask, you know, okay, well, you know, you're a science fiction writer and you're sort of like wandered into deep waters here and you're asking for help, but, you know, what kind of immediate application does like atemporality have? I mean, is it, is it just some sort of elaborate sci-fi theory problem? No, I don't think so. Here it comes bubbling up from below. Turinese street art. Right? Turin's got an Egyptian museum in it. People there are very familiar with Egyptian imagery. What the hell is this thing saying? It's big, too. I mean, these, these, these guys are about a meter high. This is like some pretty heavy-duty street art. I mean, I think it's making some kind of Italian tough guy remark. They're kind of, you know, bad boys. La Mala Vida, as they call it in Turin. So, you know, it's somebody who's like got, instead of making a knowing reference to underworld connections, they're kind of like Turinese. Egyptian gangster boys? Okay, why? I mean, who taught that guy that? I mean, I know some street artists are pretty sophisticated, but, you know, he's nobody's.